Okay, after the launch of ChatGPT, there were a lot of speculation as ChatGPT being the Google killer or the search engine killer. And um, in the last many decades, nobody has challenged search like ChatGPT has done. And without doubt, we are a big believer of generative AI and the whole AI domain as such, because this is one of the biggest technology shift that we will see in our generation. But what is the data telling us? So what we did was we did a cross, uh, we did a database analysis somewhere in the month of Feb, looking at the data till Jan. And now we will be looking at the data further that what is the data telling us that how much of Google traffic has gone down? How much Bing has gained? What has happened to chat GPT? And even in chat GPT, um, you know, there are multiple versions of chat GPT that is available in the market. So what uh, we are currently, uh, there are options like chat GPT 3.5 and chat GPT 4, which is the paid version of it. So when we use the paid version, we get limited queries. Like if I click on the chat GPT 4, we will have uh, 50 messages every three hours. But the chat GPT 4 is exceptionally more powerful than chat GPT 3.5. So, and uh, we are expecting chat GPT 5. Uh, so this domain is just starting, but what is the data telling us? And also we have now BARD, which is uh, also adding value to Google, Google's overall traffic. And, and what we are looking at from uh, BARD, so internally when the team uses both chat GPT and BARD, what we are seeing is BARD is far better for, you know, when we want to take some research-based data, when we want some benchmarking, for example, the benchmarking, if we ask in chat GPT for some data points, the chat GPT's data versus Google data, Google data is far better. If we ask for links, so what we had seen was around probably two or three months back, chat GPT used to give us a lot of links, reference, if we asked for it. And now that is not happening today. If we ask for links and etc. So many of the time it says we are not uh, providing you the links and things like that. So it has changed a lot in terms of its whole management as well, but you use chat GPT as well as BART uh, interchangeably for some things BART is better. And for most of the things chat GPT is better. And there's no comparison between chat GPT versus BART so far. And I'm sure that BART will also in, improve with respect to this. And also Bing has integrated the, the chat GPT, uh, sorry, the, uh, the BART, so sorry, the chat GPT on their uh, website as well. So that also gives uh, extra leverage to Bing, but how much of that has happened? Whether our own team members, um, our own friends, they have started using Bing. Is that something happening in different part of the world, et cetera, et cetera. So let's look at quickly the, what is the data telling us. Now, when I go to the data, uh, so this was the case in terms of uh, the first three months of chat GPT launch and chat GPT buzz. Uh, so if you see from November, December, Jan, uh, the Google had a relatively low impact, like 85, 86, 88. So this was the billions traffic which was coming to Google. Now, if you look at uh, chat GPT, the base was very low during this particular period. So November, December, Jan. So it had from 152K, it has gone to six, 606 million. So it was a massive jump. Of course, this is like zero to first one and so and so. But even after that, uh, if you look at the last three months, which is the June, May, and April, so if you see uh, chat GPT has reached 1.8 billion traffic, which is um, very decent uh, compared to where it started. So almost like three times of growth from the uh, January highs, and that is what we can see. But if you see there, it has plateaued. It's not that from 1.8, it is going to much larger volume and etc. Now let's look at Google. So Google is still at that 85, 86, 88. So when we do a very detailed analysis between just the Google top domain versus the chat GPT top domain, there also we are seeing some two percentage drop in the Google traffic. But again, how much of that is just a trend? How much of that is sustainable and etc. And uh, if you, if I add Bing also to it, um, so if you see the Bing, so Bing's overall data point is not very high. Bing is somewhere um, I think 1.2 billion is what their monthly traffic is when we when we are looking at uh, the June data or the average of the last three months. So the base is low. Now the Bing's data is lower than that of chat GPT. So the Bing getting an impact because of chat GPT is not being seen. 
so since their base was very small, so there is certainly an increase of 10-15 percentage that you will be able to see here when you compare with the previous year. So if I compare it with the previous year, that how did the data go? So of course you will be able to see that the Bing is growing, the Google is plateaued, or sometimes there can be a drop of two-three percentage here and there. But overall the volume is not drastically going in favor of chat gpt or bing so still google is holding on to most of the traffic it does and plus uh, google google's data because of chrome because google owns chrome so there's a lot of data google collects google owns google analytics which is in all of the website they have that analytics traffic so a lot of additional data is coming in plus the google search when people are searching for it along with bard um, so various data that google can get is very difficult for a Microsoft to get that data. Though Microsoft has a very interesting data, which is LinkedIn data. But I have not seen Microsoft integrating the LinkedIn data massively into any of these areas. So if they would have done some level of integration, it would be a different domain altogether to look into from a B2B perspective and all. But we are struggling to um, use the most effective way of looking at the data from a LinkedIn to uh, Bing integration, but that's also not happening. Uh, I hope some days it happens. So then we will have a different competition altogether. Probably for B2B, there will not be any competitor because the data, and then there are also two types of data when we look at it. So one data is, we call it as an affinity data from a Google terminology perspective, which tells about who are you, who, you know, what are, uh, define your own profile. So that is where Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, all of them are relatively good. Even Google is good, but Google has limited data associated with that. But the second part is what are you searching right now? What, what is your intent right now? So that's where Google is massively uh, better at, so which is the in-market category algorithm. Uh, there's no comparison between Google versus anybody else in that category. So what we had seen recently was Facebook is doing a lot of interesting things around it. Uh, so you just search for anything, any product, uh, not on Facebook, just go to any website and et cetera, wherever you have a Google code, uh, sorry, Facebook code available, uh, remarketing code or any tracking code. So based on that, Facebook is putting into a category saying, for example, I recently searched for shoes. And then the next one week, I'm only getting shoes advertisement, shoe sales, et cetera, et cetera. But did I ever go to uh, Facebook to click on an advertisement on shoe? No, I just visited some of the shoe website. Now those websites had me as their uh, loyal customers. Okay, for example, I went to Nimans. Nimans is where I had purchased shoes. I did not go to any other shoe uh, website altogether. But what is happening is now I'm a loyal customer of um, Nimans, but my you know traffic is being passed on to other competitors. So the next day I'm going to go to Facebook. I'm getting a lot of advertisement from Aldo to any brand that you talk about. But how, how did Facebook come to know that I'm purchasing a shoe? Did I go to Facebook and search? No, I went to Nimans. Now the Nimans data is being passed on to other competitors is a risk. And again, all of those things are observation as a consumer. And I've seen that multiple times. I've seen that when I had a knee pain, I went to knee pain. On Google, I searched for it. I went to some other website. The next day onwards, I'm seeing knee, knee pain related advertisement on Facebook. So there is a lot of... Um, data from your own customers is being passed on to your competitors. What that, that means is certainly use Facebook for remarketing. There is absolutely not only remarketing, but Facebook for interest and advertising and et cetera. You should use it because the way Facebook is collecting the data is very interesting. So, uh, so that's where, but overall, it's a very interesting battle. So stay tuned in terms of, and uh, we are bullish about the integration of all of these things together to make the best impact of it. But yes, the world is changing. Um, and at some point in time, we, we should also talk about the impact of all of these things in targeting from an AI base. Right now, the battle between a performance max and power five uh, on uh, Facebook and Google. So Google uses performance max, Facebook uses or Meta uses power five. So how this AI models are improving in general. Uh, what is the future? Will it allow us to do manual at all or not? Because right now we are seeing some non-theoretical uh, 
outcomes. So theoretically, if we do uh, a manual, we are supposed to get this. But the we, on theory, it works. But in practical, it is not working. Uh, so which also is giving us hint towards the future that future is more about uh, the automation uh, from targeting as well. And also uh, from SEO standpoint, also the, the trends that we are seeing and the trends that is expected, how can you be prepared for those? So stay tuned. There are a lot of interesting things that are coming up in this whole space. And uh, on one side, we are excited and bullish. On the other side, we are also uh, you know, worried and we have our own uh, concerns about how do we ride this wave? Uh, will we be missing out? So we do a lot of sessions on AI related stuff and we are you know, proactively worried rather than reactively worrying about all of these trends. So stay tuned, enjoy this whole uh, growth of AI in digital marketing. Thank you.